everyone, I'm Karen T and you're war. That's not how it starts. Every single time I start a video, I want to say, hi, I'm Karen T and you're watching Disney Channel. Like that is just stuck in my head. I'm just subconsciously trying to still live out that dream. But hi everyone, I'm Karen T from Bakersman Cookies. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a 360 3D snow globe cookie and it's all edible. Snow globes have just taken over my life, especially after winning the Christmas cookie challenge and having to make a huge snow globe then. And funny thing is, I don't even own a snow globe. I'm not like a big snow globe person, but they're just so cute around the holidays. So making this type of snow globe is advanced. It was still even really hard for me to work with sugar, even though I've done it before. It's just every single time it comes out a little bit different. But nonetheless, I think you should give it a try because it's fun and at the end of the day, it's sugar. So let's get started. First, I'm going to flour my surface and roll out my dough. This is my standard sugar cookie recipe. You can find that recipe right here or in the description. Each snow globe display will have three cookies and they'll all be different sizes. We'll have a small, medium, and a large. The only cookie cutter I have is a three inch cookie cutter and this will be my middle cookie. I should have more circle cookie cutters, but when I went to buy them, a set for 10 was like $40. And I said, no ma'am, I am using whatever else I have in the kitchen. So I'm using two different size small dishes for the other sizes. They shouldn't be two different in size, otherwise it'll look funky. The smallest one, which will be the top, is two and a half inches, which is a good width to give us enough room to put something inside and have a globe sit on it. Now that these are cut, I'll let them show in the freezer for 20 minutes and then bake them. These are all baked and looking good. So I stack them on top of each other to see how they would fit and it's perfect. This is exactly how much difference they should be from each other. Next, I'm prepping them to get bathed in royal icing. So using the same dishes from earlier, I'm going to place the stack of cookies onto them and you'll see why in a sec. But first, we have to glue these cookies together. I'm using some royal icing to do that and making sure I can get them as centered as possible. They might slip around if the royal icing is too loose, but that's okay. I'm going to let that dry for five minutes before I mess with it. In the meantime, I prepped my royal icing that's going to cover the snow globe base. I'm using my royal icing recipe, which you can find right here or in the description below. I made a runnier than usual flood consistency so it can drip easily down the cookies, but it's also still stiff enough that it'll hold some shape on them. Now for the fun part. I made sure to do this in a baking sheet with walls so it doesn't go spreading all over the table, cause it would if it could. I'm pouring the icing on the edges of the top to help it run over. I'm not really worried about how the top looks since it's going to be covered in raw icing. So I would even scrape a little bit of the top if you can. And I'm using a little spatula to make sure everything is covered. So depending on the consistency you have, it may be really runny or it may start hardening already. If it's on the harder side, you want to immediately take a spatula and start scraping off the drips. If it's super runny, you might need to sit there for a bit and you'll have to do this several times. But at some point, it should stop dripping and you'll be able to get a nice clean edge. Even if you don't, we're going to add some detailing to it later anyway. Now set this aside until it's completely dry, uncovered. Maybe two plus hours? Next, I'm going to make the tree that'll be the centerpiece of the snow globe. I have some transparent paper here or projector paper, whatever you want to call it, but parchment paper will work too. I have some outlines of a simple tree here that I just got from Google. Each snow globe will get two flat trees to make a 3D tree. So I'm going to outline these icing transfers and in the center, I'm going to leave it empty, either at the top or the bottom. Each 3D tree will have one that's missing the top and one that's missing the bottom. So when you put them together crisscross, they'll make a 3D tree. You'll also want to overcompensate how much room you'll need to make sure it fits. So a little more room on the side and top. Then I'll set these aside to dry. Now we're going to work on this sugar dome, which is the difficult part. To create them, we're going to use the water balloon method. This requires some high quality balloons and I'm going to fill it with water. 
The balloons I have are nine inch latex balloons. I think the standard is about 12 inches and the smallest you can get is five inches. But this nine inch one worked really well for me and it'll give me the shape that I want. You may want to test one first to check to see if it'll fit on top of the vase. So I'm putting the opening of the balloon on the faucet and filling it up slowly. So once I get to a point where I think it's good, I'll take it off, then tie it. So as it is right now, the shape is kind of weird and I want it to be close to a perfect circle. So I'm going to push the water a little further in the balloon, if that makes sense, and tie it again. And that's when it's nice to have a bigger balloon because it has extra latex to give. You may have to do this several times until you get the perfect shape. So I tied it three times total. And now I have the perfect round balloon. You'll need a balloon for each globe you're going to make. Now I'm going to set this right next to the sugar pot with some shot glasses ready to go. So in this pot, I have 300 grams of sugar, 200 grams of corn syrup, and 75 milliliters of water. I would say this would make 12 globes, so if you're making less, I would cut it in half. And it's always nice to make a few extras. I'm going to put it on high and let it boil until it reaches 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's there, I'll turn off the heat and let it sit until it stops bubbling. Now I'm grabbing one of the balloons by the knot and I'm going to dip it in on all the sides. I'm dipping it all the way up until maybe an inch away from the knot. Once everything is covered, I'm going to lift it up and let it drip, drip, drip until it stops. There may be a little tail left and once it's cool enough, you can just push it into the globe like a little button. I'm hanging it in the air until I know it's completely cool and then setting it on the shot glass to finish my others. Once they're all ready, it's time to pop the balloons, which can be scary. I'm going to do this over the sink since I'm pouring out the water. So I'm taking one of the balloons and with a scissor, I'm going to cut a small slit at the top, flip over the balloon and let the water drain out. You want to do this slowly because if you do it too fast, then it can either crack or maybe the balloon will pop so slow and steady is your friend. Once it's mostly out and it's still stuck to the globe, you can slowly pull the balloon off the dome. And there you have it, a beautiful sugar globe. But if it's not very clear like it isn't here, you can pour a little water on the inside and rotate it around and it should fill up all the nooks and crannies to give you a smooth, clear globe just like that. Just make sure to drain out any extra water. Then I'll set these aside until I'm ready to use. Now back to the base that's completely dry. There are some crackings at these inner corners, but it's okay, we're going to cover it up anyway. Using a stiff consistency, I'm going to pipe a border in the corners. And now it looks fancy schmanchy. Now I want to make a snow effect on top, so I'm using a stiff slash hybrid consistency with a big opening to cover the top in snow. And then I'll make little droplings on the side to make it look like little cute snow mounds, if you will. And here is the icing transfer I made, plus some extra decorations. And the ones with the hollow top will be placed first. Then the other one with the hollow bottom will go on top of it, crisscrossed. Then I'll add some tiny clear sprinkles to it to make it look more snowy and glittery. To make sure they stay together and also to make it more consistent with the snow glow theme, I'm going to add some stiff white consistency to the top to make it look like snow. Now the final piece the globe. Carefully place the globe right on top and nestle it deep into the snow to make sure it's not going anywhere. And there we have it. You guys, how freaking cute is that? I honestly can't believe I made this. Like, I think this came from someone else. I think I just bought this from somebody. I am just so amazed at how clear this globe came out and it did because of that trick of adding water into it. And I love how the globe itself is just really round and I was able to achieve that because I dipped the balloon instead of dripping sugar on top of the balloon. And so you almost get a full sphere. One thing to note too, when you're working with sugar like this, you want to make it within like one or two days of giving it to someone or eating it or an event because 
it's just, it gets really sticky and depending on the humidity, which right now in my condo, it's kind of humid. So it does get sticky sometimes. And so the sprinkles might stick to it, but if you leave it as is, for the most part, it should be totally fine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe and have a happy holidays, happy new year, and I will see you guys in the next video.